All right, welcome back. This is uh, Tuning 101. So we have here two ballad songs, both bushings and um, just washers, two different types of pivot systems, the two uh, most popular, and I'll talk about how to tune them. Both have tap. So we're gonna be fixing that, and I'll show you how. To start off with, we'll talk about the equipment that you'll need. So obviously, your ballad song, a good driver. You can use the ones that come with the set, but these likely strip bolts very often, and uh, having a good driver always helps you to put that little bit more force into it and get better tolerances. Um, with your driver, you'll need the bit size that you need for your screws. So I've got here T8 and T10 for both of these knives. If you have a bushing spaller saw, I'll talk about the two different types. Uh, if you have a bushing spell song, you'll want your spare, spare hardware, some sort of sandpaper or even a nail file works fine. I usually use a nail file. It's fine, trust me. Um, if you want to use sandpaper, it is better, much better. Uh, you can get much cleaner sanding. Um, you can have higher grits as well, which will help you basically be a lot more accurate. Um, if you're doing bushings, having a micrometer can be, you know, or like a vanilla caliper like this, then it will be really useful to have one of these. You don't need to have one. I personally use it because it means you can be a hell of a lot more accurate. Um, but don't go buying one of these because they're really expensive. If you just have one lying around, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and then microfiber cloths. This is just for clearing up oil. You know, when you take stuff apart, you don't want to be getting oil everywhere, all over your hands, all over your desk. So I always just use microfiber cloths. You could just use a bit of paper towel, but, um, I find these always cleaner a little nicer. All right, so first up is the washer balance one. This here is a Squid Industries, Squid Trainer version 3.5. Washer balance song, in my opinion, one of the best washers only balance songs. Um, your pivot is essentially made up of a pivot, screw, two washers. And what you're doing is you're sandwiching a washer on either side of the blade here and here, pivot goes through over the handle. These ballad songs are possibly, they're the quickest one to tune, the easiest one to tune, um, but usually not as good tolerances as uh, bushings knives. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to tune one of these. When putting back your ballad song back together, I think it's always best practice to have it closed, handle, put that on and hold it in place. Then you want to slide your washers in and keep contact on the side of the handle so the washer doesn't slip through. I do that again with the other washer on the other side, push it in. In order to make them line up, because the pivot isn't going to fit through that gap if you see, if you take an Allen wrench like this or anything thin and small, put it through, give it a wiggle round, it helps to line everything up and you'll find that putting your pivot through becomes a lot easier. What you'll probably find is it goes through the first bit, it goes through the first bush, uh, first washer, and then your blade is not in the right place to contact it. If you just wiggle it around a bit, line it up, it should pass straight through. To get the second washer in place, either you can wiggle the handle up and down like this, and usually it'll pop through, or if it's not in place enough, uh, just take one of these and you should be able to look inside and push that washer in the right direction for the pivot to come all the way through. And then it's just a case of screwing in your, your screw. So, to tune your washers only ballast on. First thing to do is tighten down the pivots so it will not move. I find that, especially on uh, single sided pivots like these, these are actually um, body plus pivots in the Squid Trainer, I know. I shouldn't do that, but Squid Trainer has currently got its pivots lent to my body plus replicant uh, until I get more Squid hardware arriving later this week. So, if it's one-sided and you can't hold the pivots on both sides to screw, if you open the knife, squeeze the handles together, hold pressure between those handles, and then tighten, you'll find that it will stop spinning, and you can tighten all the way down to the point where it won't go any further. Your bar song is now pretty much locked in place, if you see. Um, 
this is the thing with with washers only ballad songs. You need to sit there and fine tune the kind of how tight that pivot is to make sure there's just enough pressure to hold it without any tap or play, um, but not enough pressure to cause the handle to bind. So what you're going to do is very slowly back off that pivot a tiny amount each time. And you see, you let it swing, and obviously not free swing, so we're going to go a little bit further. We now have free swing. Check the tap. None on that handle. And we'll do the other handle too. So squeeze together and tighten it down as far as it will go. So this one's spinning slightly. <laughs> Give me a second. So that was a bit of a process. Um, I did basically did the exact same thing on this side, but with, uh, with the other one. The problem with this is the screw was spinning in the slot and I couldn't quite, even with the pinch method, put enough pressure on that pivot to uh, get it to stick. This is something that's a bit worse about clone hardware, which is why I much prefer swapping stuff out with Squid Industries hardware, is that you can't put one on either side. Um, but I have done this handle as well. No tap. So that's your bushing, uh, bushes only bow song tuned to no tap. And if we check play, very small amount. If you have a, a washers only bow song, to have play that uh, that little uh, with no tap, actually pretty decent tune. With bushings, it's a lot easier to, to hold no tap and no play, but you'll find with washer bow songs, after a little while, they will end up getting tap and play again. And it's just a case of tightening it down and backing off ever so slightly until you have no tap and no play. But uh, these pivot systems aren't as good. And so this is kind of the best you can get on uh, Washers only. So now the moment you've all been waiting for, a bushings ballot song. Now, what these will have is you see you have your pivot with your two washers, same as the washer only ballot song, but you have in the middle here a bushing. And this sits in the hole in your blade, just like that. And what it will do is it adds an extra, like, uh, I guess, layer of friction to dissipate the friction between uh, multiple layers. And uh, this causes better swing. Also, it means you can crank all the way down these pivots as tight as you want. And uh, what it will do is the the bushings, sorry, the bushing will contact the washers, and uh, the washers will not contact the blade. And therefore, what you have is a uh, you can crank all the way down, and that that uh, these will push down together without squeezing on the blade, and so it will not bind up. Um, that's what you're looking for, at least. If your bushing is undersized. Um, it will need replacing. You cannot fix an undersized bushing. Um, and that is where the bushing is thinner than your blade and your washers still contact your blade. This will then need to be tuned exactly like a washer balancing uh, in, the same, in the same way by tightening it up and backing it off. Um, sadly, there's no way to fix a, a uh, undersized bushing. It just needs to be replaced. This, however, here is an oversized bushing. You can see the bite handle has no tap. So that tap that we had earlier was coming from this bushing here. This bushing is slightly too oversized, it needs to be sanded down ever so slightly to get it to the point where we no, no longer have tap. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this bushing ever so slightly wider than this blade. Not too wide uh, or it's oversized and if we go past that point and it's thinner than the blade we have undersized and you've basically ruined the bushing. So I'll show you a few tips on how to sand. I would like to also quickly note that when you're taking apart a bushing ballast on like this if you're looking for the, like really fine tolerances uh, to make them perfect, take note of which way around your washers were, as well as which washer was on the top, which washer was on the bottom, and the orientation of the bushing. Things like this will cause the slightest difference, um, and if you want to make sure your part tolerances are perfect, I recommend taking note of that and uh, going on from there so that you kind of can pinpoint exactly where your problems are. Sometimes these bushings um, will have slight bends in them from the factory, uh, from where they're stamped out and you'll have a kind of like a convex side. Um, this should be placed towards the blade as this is where the friction will be least uh, and it won't pinch as easily. So now, how to sand a bushing. This is where your micrometer will come in useful. Set it to zero and then measure the thickness of that bushing. So you can see here that is 3.23 or thereabouts. 
Now, the thickness of the blade, always a little weird, especially with cheap clones like this. Um, with Squid Industries products, usually it's a lot better. Uh, with any other major provider, usually a lot better. But clones especially, usually the blade is uneven thicknesses. But I'd still say measure it, just to make sure. So you can see there we've got a 318 blade thickness. So this bushing needs to be bigger than 318, but not that much bigger, not like 325 bigger. I'd say we probably need to get it down to about 323 or 322. Um, so it's just bigger than the, the blade and can still, you know, um, crank down those washers onto the bushing and not the blade. So how are you gonna sand this? I'd say probably the easiest way to sand is to take your sandpaper, your um, your nail file, whatever, and what you want to do is hold very lightly, because if you push down hard, you'll tend to find that you have uneven pressure on either side of the bushings, and you'll end up sanding at an angle, or you'll sand one of the sides off, and uh, really you want that, that pressure to be as even as possible. So if you hold very lightly, you'll have to sand more, but you'll get a, a lot better, um, kind of like a finish, not finish, but uh, it'll be a lot even, a lot more even and you won't have any problems. So if you hold it very lightly, go around in circles like this on your sandpaper. If you have like proper sandpaper that's nice and wide, this is a lot better, this step. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit there and do circles like this, making sure to, after maybe five or six, um, depending on how much you need to take off. I know I need to take off quite a bit of this, so uh, I'll be here for a little while. Uh, measure it again, every few. So you can see now we're at 324. We were at 325, weren't we? So now we're at 324, and uh, we're gonna keep going until we get down to 322. I'm gonna do a tiny bit more. and we're ready to test in the knife. If you don't have a micrometer, I would suggest you have to put, you have to take apart and put back together, together your knife every, um, I'd say every five turns. This is a very long process, which is why I do recommend getting one of these if you are gonna tune a lot of power songs. But um, you know, if you don't have one of these, it's not the end of the world, it's just gonna take a lot longer. So I'm gonna put this power song back together and we'll talk a bit more. Sometimes you'll find that, especially if your bushing is oversized, um, your washer will not want to go in. Uh, you'll get one side in, and then the bushing will stop the other washer from coming, uh, from putting in between the blade and the handle. Um, one tip for this would be to loosen your Zen pin, maybe. And this will just allow handles to bend a little more. Uh, but if you have channels, then sometimes it's even more difficult. I'd say if you get like a flathead screwdriver or something, put it in that gap and just widen it slightly as you get this in. Uh, help a lot more. Don't use too much force, especially if you have copper. Uh, washers or bronze washers, I can't remember which one it is. Um, you might bend the washers, so just make sure you're not putting in too much force. But same thing again, we're gonna line up this handle with the pivot. And put this pivot through. Give it a little wiggle. Can sometimes be difficult this step. Let's pivot in. I'm going to tighten this up. All right, I had to quickly uh, tighten it up a little bit more and uh, I had to take it apart and sand it one more time actually because uh, it wasn't quite small enough. But as you can see, I've got no tap now. Still got free swing, both handles. So I'm going to lube this up and hopefully it will sound pretty good. All right, so for Lubing up a bar song, I think the best way to do it is open and then just a little drop in the top of each each side of the pivots. That'll be enough. I just use a uh, some bike chain lube that I found in the shed, but I do I do definitely recommend using like a proper bar song lubricant. I know carbon honey is very, very good. Um, something like NRB thick. That's, pr that's pretty good, as well as um, even just KPL. KPL's pretty decent, and it'll all sound a lot better than my bike loop that I'm using. But to work that into the pivots, if you just give it a, a few, 
few spins. If you open and close it a bit. You know, really get that worked in there. And there we go. There's your well-tuned Bushings power song. I appreciate Bushings are a lot more hard to tune well. Um, here's play, by the way, just so I can show that. A little bit, which isn't too bad for a sandwich power song. But yeah, you have how to tune a uh, bearings, sorry, a bushings power song and how to tune a washer's power song. Um, I don't have any bearings to show you how to do that one, but essentially it's just tying it up as much as you want because uh, because of how they work, they're very easy to tune. There you go. Now, there's a few little things I want to add, um, especially with clones. Real products is a lot better, um, but clones come with very shitty hardware. And so you've got to be really careful when talking things, when like tightening things up, not to strip hardware. Um, what I usually do, what I like to do is to actually replace with, um, aftermarket hardware or a proper like Squid Industries hardware because I know Squid sells their stuff. Now, if you're using a Bally Plus product, chances are it will take Squid hardware. I know the Bally Plus Kraken, um, this Bally Plus replicant, take, um, they take Squid hardware. So if you want to buy um, like actual Squid hardware off of their website, you can even get titanium versions with nice colors. So I'm going to get some purple ones for this to look good. Um, but yeah, if you do that, much better, you can crank down a lot more, get tolerances a lot tighter, and it looks better, and it's less likely to strip. So I would something I would definitely recommend, especially if you're buying a replicant like this, or really any value plus product, they usually have really shit hardware. The one is a lot better, the one actually has pretty decent hardware. Same with Arm Shark. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can actually replace any of their products. I know Arm Shark, you cannot replace it with, um, with Squid Industries hardware, but uh, especially the value plus products, Definitely worth it, improves the sound, means you can crank it down more, it's a lot nicer. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, just leave them uh, in the comments or contact me on Instagram or Discord. I'll be sure to answer you as quickly as possible. There you go.